Hello and welcome to this video, my name is Murray Beckham. What we're going to do here using PTE AV Studio, formerly Pictures to Exe of course, is to ask the question, what in fact is a slide style? Now if you're watching on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell so you'll be advised whenever I put up a new video. And if you think this video is worth it, then give me a thumbs up too. So what, in fact, is a slide style? Well, that's a pretty good question. Let me begin to answer that question by first going to the bottom right corner and switching from the slide list into the timeline. And we'll select this image that has a little bit of a gap between it and the next image. So a slide style is anything visual that we can create, whether it's a still image or a video, within our slide duration time. So slide duration is measured from here, when the image first starts to appear on screen, to here, when it finally leaves the screen. The slide style also includes the opening transition style, and the length of the slide duration itself. Now we do tend to think of slide styles as including some type of animation, but it doesn't have to. Because now we have quite a number of creative color tools within PTE AV Studio. We have dynamic blur and also opacity. All these options can be used to form a slide style where no animation was used at all. One of the techniques we could use to demonstrate the color options in PTE AV Studio is that gentle change from monochrome to color. Slide styles can include more than one image. And a triptych is a good example. But in fact, a slide style has the potential to include far more than just three images. A slide style can also have other artwork built into the style, such as backgrounds and frames. But there's many more examples we could use. A background, for example, can become a part of the slide style which means that we can select different images and apply the style. Any animation within that style will be applied to the images we select, but the same background will be applied to all of them. And of course we can do this with video, full screen images, text and objects like graphics and even clip art. One issue we have to be aware of when creating slide styles is to tell the software what part of the style relates to the image or video that we can vary. In other words, the part of the style we can add to a number of different images, and what part of the style may be fixed, like a background, a frame, or artwork, which would be something we would want applied to all of the images. We do this in the objects and animation screen and we're viewing that screen here. We need to go to the properties tab at the top right of the screen and anything variable like the image will be labeled a main image. Now in our case here, we've only got one image so the main image box is automatically ticked and it's numbered main image one. Now coming back into the main PTE AV Studio window, I'm going to select just one image from my file list here, double click, and as we know, it'll appear into the slide list. If I select that image and open up the objects and animation screen, and if we go to the properties tab at the top right, we'll see that automatically this image has been given the title of main object because it's the only image we've got selected and it's been given a number. What I'm going to do next is to close down the objects and animation screen. 
I'm going to scroll to the top of my file list because I'm going to select that textured background that we saw earlier on. Double click. If I select that and go to the Objects and Animations screen, I may be deciding here to click into the grey area to lose the bounding box and the selection because I may want to select an image to appear over the top. Now I can do whatever it is that I want to do with that image, but if I were to create a slide style here, I'd see a bit of a problem. Because you'll notice that the image in question, the little box at the top left of the properties isn't ticked, and it doesn't have a number. So in this case, it's my background, which is the variable part, and the picture would appear in every single image I applied the slide style to. All we need to do to correct that is to remove the main object status from the background, select the image in question, and tick the box. If I made a slide style of what I've just done here, I could apply it to 50 different images, and it would be applied, but I'd get the same background to all 50. So I suppose here it wouldn't be unreasonable to generalize and say that if you're going to make a slide style from just one image, then you don't have to worry too much about the main object in the properties tab here. But if I was going to put together a triptych, and maybe if I was going to put a triptych together over the background we can currently see, then I have to be aware of exactly what the main objects are. But with a triptych, of course, we'd have three. So let's quickly do that. So to demonstrate this, you can see I've come back to the main PTE AV Studio window. And once again, I'll double click my background. I'm going to go down to the objects and animation screen. I'll make this very slightly smaller, so we've got a bit of space to work. Click into the grey area so I can deselect my background, and I'm going to add three vertical images. Now I've got three here. I can select them all and open them. I'm going to save a bit of time and just quickly arrange these across the background here. From a visual point of view, everything seems to look fine. But if I was to go ahead and make a slide style of what we can see here, it wouldn't work correctly for the same reason I explained a few moments ago. If I select the background here, if we look up to the properties at the top right, we can see that this is labeled main object. Now we want the background to appear in whatever images we apply the style to. So we need to remove that tick. But now we need to think about which order we're going to give the main image to the three images we're going to use. Let's take them from the top. If I select the top one, you can see the bounding box appear around the one on the left. It would seem quite logical for that to be main object one. So I'll tick the box and it's automatically selected. If I select the next one down, it's the one on the right hand side. It would make more sense for that to be object three, wouldn't it? So when we select three vertical images, the order we select them will be the order they appear in the slide style. So let me make BD images 016 as main object three. Now you can see it's automatically picked up too, but if I just click that, I can scroll either way, and I went the wrong way, but there's three. If I select the one in the middle now, I can go back, tick the main object, and adjust that to be number two. Now the slide style would work correctly. Now, coming back to the main screen, we can test that theory because that's exactly what I've done. I've just made a quick test slide style from the triptych. 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to apply these images in a different order. So I'm going to place this one first, second and third. Then when I select them all and I go to Styles and Themes, there's my styles. I put it in the user styles and that's what I called it, Test Triptych. There you can see the three images. Well, I don't even need to double click this to apply it for you to see that now the balloons are coming up in a different order because they'll come up in the order that I select them. So if I did that slightly different, let me pick this one, this one and this one. Now I know that this one is going to be in the center. And of course, that's logical given the content of those three. Let's just quickly apply that. And there we have it. So we can see that we can make a slide style from almost anything visual, be that a color change, monochrome to color, animation, or a mixture of both. Now, what we're looking at here is a triptych, but it is a triptych which is different to the one we looked at earlier. Here, it's a landscape image which has been selected three times, and it's the slide style that breaks the image into three sections. But of course, in the slide style, then the object number here is going to be one, one, and one, because they're all the same image. The difference here with the movement is just a modifier that's been added to the three sections of the image. In this next example, as you can see, there are six Kodachrome slides. So here things are a little different in that the background and the artwork for the cardboard mount of the slide, they are not main objects because they become the fixed part of the slide style. The variable part is the images. And in this case, we select six images and just apply the style. Now styles are not cast in stone. There are times when we can change aspects of a style. For example here, if the background wasn't to your liking, you could select six images, apply the style, then go into the objects and animation screen and just change the background for something which was more suitable for the presentation you were making. Some of the people I've spoken to about slide styles seem to think they are something for complex animations only, but far from it. If you had a slideshow where you wanted to use 50 or 60 images and they all needed the same background or frame, it's far easier to just make one image and one frame, create a slide style and then apply that to the rest of the images in your project. To bring this video to a close, I'd like to make one final point. Slide styles haven't changed greatly between Pictures to XE9 and PTE AV Studio 10. So if you're looking to increase your knowledge about slide styles and you see a tutorial that was created in PTE 9, then it's not going to be outdated. And I've got quite a number of those on my website and on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you next time.